I've been so busy, and there are several videos that I wanted to make, and uh, this is just going to have to be the one that I pick right now, because I have seen some discussion on it, and I happen to have written something about it on a forum that I go to about two weeks ago or so. Lost track of time. But I wanted to talk about protein absorption, because there are a lot of myths out there, and um, so let's talk about the facts. So many times I've seen on a forum or people state that there is a specific number um, in which you can only absorb a certain amount of protein in one sitting. And the truth is, there is no fact to back this up whatsoever. Um, and that's, that's the thing that kind of gets me, is people say this, but they don't actually do the research to find out if it's true or not. And um, so I hear people say it a lot, and I just kind of, you let it go in one ear and out the other. Although I just want to put it out there that this is false. Um, now, it's important to understand about the digesti digestive um, system and knowing how protein and carbohydrates are digested. And I'm not going to get into all of that because not only uh, do I not understand it all and I don't have the names, <laughs> but uh, this video cannot be that long to explain that. Um, but I do understand the basics, the very basics on how protein is um, absorbed and also how it's utilized in the body. What doctors and researchers say is when asked the question, how much protein can I absorb in one sitting, the answer is typically, how much protein are you going to use? Um, our bodies can absorb whatever amount of protein that we have. There are optimal times to take in protein, such as right before a workout and early in the morning, because these are the times which your body actually demands more. And um, the, the thing about it is, is you could sit there and you could take in 50 grams of protein, um, it doesn't mean that all of that protein is going to be used properly. What your body doesn't use gets turned into fat, and that can be a problem. Now, there are important things to note um, in all of this, such as the type of protein that you're eating, and the best time to take in your protein for optimal absorption. And also keep in mind that as weight loss patients, we do not absorb everything anyways. We're never going to be absorbing 100% of anything. Um, animal protein basically sits in your stomach for a long time, or that of a normal person, and is slowly absorbed over time, such as beef and that sort of thing. Um, whey protein is... Is, is, is naturally partially digested. Um, it's made up of amino acids. And um, so when you take in whey protein with just water, it's absorbed very quickly. Um, my doctor tells me that we do not absorb, when we take it in in the liquid form, we do not absorb all of it, not because our bodies can't, but because as weight loss patients, we don't. Um, because that's also digested in the uh, smaller intestines. But what I see over and over on health boards um, and what my doctor has told me is it is super important to take time when you are having your protein. The longer you take to drink your protein, the better the absorption rate is going to be because it needs to take that time. So you don't want to get a protein drink that you're slamming back in basically one minute and chugging it, which I have done in the past with those nasty bullet things that Denise is going around saying are wonderful. It tastes like car oil. <laughs> I don't know how she can... 
I used to chug those things so fast, and my doctor's like, you're not really getting much of it anyways, because you're not giving your body time, so, you know, in that case. Um, the other thing is knowing when to take your protein, uh, like there are better times to take whey protein, and then there is animal protein, but the best time to do this is early in the morning, or like I said, right before a workout those are really optimal times to take in. But understand that there is no limit on what we can absorb. There is a limit on how much your body utilizes. Okay, that's very important to note. So this all depends on your genetics, your makeup, um, and not the max factor kind of makeup. <laughs> um, and your routine, what is your exercise life like, um, you know, that sort of thing. But the body is an amazing thing and it also adjusts over time. So it, you know, can actually grow and expand based on your lifestyle to what it actually utilizes. So just make sure that you're getting in the protein that you need and you're not overdoing it. One good thing into taking more protein than we actually need as weight loss patients especially is that it keeps us fuller longer. And you will find the longer that you get out, the hungry you are between meals. And the most important thing is when you are on a high protein diet, you will find that you can go a lot longer without feeling hungry and you feel more satisfied than if you don't have a protein snack if you just take something like an apple, you're going to be hungry in 10 minutes after the apple is gone. Um, but anyways, those are the important things to note, is just knowing your body and knowing how much you need. I wouldn't recommend taking all your protein at once. I would say it makes sense to spread it out. However, it is not true that your body can only absorb a certain amount in one sitting. So if you get your protein in a couple times a day with those 42-gram nasty bullets, so be it. But take your time to drink it in. Um, and also just know that as weight loss patients, we're not going to absorb all of it. And so you're not getting all 42 grams. It's probably somewhere in the frame of 38. That's just a rough guesstimate. That's what my doctor told me. Um, and that's basically it. One other thing to note that my doctor told me about optimal times, like I said, taking whey protein in the mornings before workout is best because the demand is very high during those times. Um, however, at other times, um, whey on its own may pass too quickly through your digestive system and uh, be fully broken down into amino acids um, You know, by the time it reaches the intestinal tract. So what he told me is that the absorption is not maximized during those times. So those times you want to get your protein from other sources, such as egg and, um, and animal-type protein, where it sits in your stomach a lot longer and your body takes longer to absorb it. So that's basically all I have to say. Um, Any time that you hear something, I would just encourage everyone to do their own research and go to a medical source um, and find out. Ask your doctor. I also basically made a video on knowing your BMR and telling people not to go to some random website and punch in your numbers because it's all based on averages and that's a bunch of bull. I mean, you get the most stupidest, bogus number and it's ridiculous and it can be dangerous for people who are trying to lose weight who are extremely heavy and they think their body's burning a certain amount come to find out it's not so you just have to be careful where you get your information from so that's it and by the way um, I would just say if you're gonna buy those car oil bullet things I don't think you want to savor the moment and sit there and sip on it like it's a beautiful drink. <laughs> That's why I like smoothies. Because you get brain freeze if you drink it too fast and you could just sit there and enjoy it. I mean, should getting in your protein be so painful? That's what I want to know. How do you do it, Denise? Come on. <laughs> 
and sucking the fish oil out of that pill, that's downright nasty. How did you do? I would have vomited all over the place. My gosh.